Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Iridium here in New York City. Keyboardist and organist Pete Levin tonight is playing selections from his brand new album, his live trio recording, featuring special guest Lou Soloff on trumpet. As Levin Trio Live. This must be a labor of love. I mean, this album is fantastic. It is. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the live, the doing it live, labor of love that, yeah, that about, describe, about describes it. About, you know, playing with two good friends, two great players, and we just get to boogie. <laughs> it was great. It's great. You know, I, I understand that back in 2007 when you recorded the Deacon Blues album. This was really the first time you started playing the traditional B3. This is, was something that you've always wanted to do. It is. I did it years ago. Uh, there was a period in the 70s where I loved the instrument. It was, really, it was my first, kind of my first electric instrument because I got into synthesizers and Moog synthesizers and Expand and then had racks of stuff. But it's kind of like the organ, Hammond organ was my first electric keyboard. And I, I always loved it, but uh, I went through years in, in studios, on sessions. Let me play Hammond. Let me play organ on this. Could use organ. No, no, no. I don't think. Play piano. And, like, and, like, and then it kind of turned around, and everybody wants organ. So, like, so this is, uh, uh, it's still there. It's still, it's still coming back. And, uh, it's a resurgence that doesn't end, I think. And I'm, I'm glad to be doing it. It's, it's such a beautiful instrument. It's fun. And they, track on here with the late Joe Beck. You uh, pulled that out of the vaults. Tell me about the track and also your time with Joe, because he was another one of those great session guitars during the 70s and, and late 60s. Joe, Joe was real special. Uh, real special. Just, uh, he had ways of uh, he would just harmonize 
stuff. We played it. He would do it on the spot. He was arranging on the spot all the time, and would come up with your know, reharmonizations of the simplest things. Like he would play play fun, my funny Valentine ballad, and it would all he could do was wow, just just watch him do it. Like he'd do the he'd do the intro, do a, do, a, do a chorus by himself. Then I'm supposed to come in. I'm saying no, go play, play, but. Uh, Playing with him was an ins- was an inspiration for you know, for me because because the, uh, the music was always going someplace else, uh, but but someplace very very musical. Uh, we did uh, he did an album uh, with me it was Deacon Blues, or the, the, and uh, we we did some touring as a trio that way. And there was a point uh, we had a tour coming up, and he called me one day and. Uh, I said, Pete, I got to cancel. I said, cancel what? I said, cancel everything. And he said, he's got cancer. He's got stage three, he's moving to stage four. And that was it. That was it. The, I, the, the following album, I got him to play on a couple of tracks, and he couldn't do any more. He, he didn't have the strength. Uh, but I found that, uh, the answer to your first question, I found that one track that we were going to do it for, for Deacon Blues, that first album. And we did it, and it was, it was okay. We weren't really excited about it, and I just pushed it aside because I had plenty of other material. And, and I just found it sitting in my Pro Tools system. And I said, you know what, let me, let me just pull this out. This was you know, after he was gone. And I, I just thought it would be fun to pull it up. And we had done it without a drummer. It was just the two of us. And uh, yeah, I got a hold of Danny Gottlieb, who's uh, Joe and I have known for years and played with. And, 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 I, and I asked Danny to come in and just, just play drums to this. And, we made a trio uh, kind of the hard way by, by, by pieces and just put it on and it's not the you know it's not the most relaxed performance it's not spontaneous but it's but it's real special and and and, uh, uh, and it's a, a, a real good solo that Joe took on it so, so, uh, I just kind of like putting it on there a little uh, little thank you to Joe and uh, like uh, after after the fact and uh, if he was here to see the album, he'd probably say, oh, man, don't put that on there. He'd, he'd, he'd tear my head off for it, but it's okay. It's too late. He can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, anyway, that's, that's the story behind that track. Right? So. This well accomplished keyboardist. Oh, jeez, I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> uh, you started off playing, you started off playing French horn. I did, uh, and uh, masters in Juilliard, and I, I was I could play the thing. I was doing pretty well, but I was playing piano in college, and I just got interested in it. I get interested in synthesizers, electronic instruments, in the seventies, and started messing with them, and that was my that was my thing, and I. Uh, you know, if I was only playing piano, I never would have got anywhere because there were killing piano players coming out of the woodwork in New York when I got here. So, so I was doing the electric stuff, and I, I, I don't know, the, some of the chops were still there. I tried to get the disciplines back, and uh, 
but, but it was more like accomplished keyboard player. I'd, I don't even think I am an accomplished keyboard player. I, it, I, you know, I look at some other, you know, some other people who are really highly skilled players and do that. But I, th I think it's more about being around you know, people who are make, making music on as high a level as they can, and you know, playing with them, learning from them. Uh, that's more important. I mean, chops. Any, you know, a lot of people with chops. Uh, yeah, there are people who can play circles around me, but maybe they can't do some of the gigs that I would do. But, uh, it's all about making music. That's, that's more. That's more important. However you fit into it. If you're just playing whole notes, if that's what was the right thing to play, then we do that. It's just a matter of picking the right notes, which is that's what Miles Davis was about. Nuts. You know, in his bebop days, yeah, he was killing. He was he was a great technique and, and chops, uh, and he grew out of that. And then it was all about his choice of notes, and that was uh, that's when he became a model to you know, to so many thousands of musicians. And they're still studying what he plays. You know, you have been a well accomplished keyboardist for the last 25 30 years and you're segueing to playing to be three how comfortable are you doing this now very com comfortable it's a uh, i mean i'm taking on a lot it's it's what i decide to do as a musical setting with a group i make it as challenging as i can with the music but the organ i've, I've been playing it for a long time you I know mean, since the 60s actually uh so that's that's not that big a leap but i you're know, taking hard music and doing it with Lenny White and say, Lenny, take it out. You know, do it, do what you feel. I mean, that's 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 the challenge at at, at this point. Uh, uh, whatever I do, I'll, I'll like to add another challenge to it. I, I, I like that. I don't want stuff to stay still. I got to keep going, going forward somewhere. See what can happen. That's what Gil Evans used to say. Like, you know, here's a chart. Let's see what can happen. Let's see what we can do with it. Man. And um, that's me. Gil is looking over my shoulder every time I play. You know, this this album is really, really special because you really go into some of your own, but also you do Freddie Hubbard, you go into Thelonious Monk, yeah. and then you also, um, on this album, the traditional trio. That's not happening anymore in jazz, really. It uh, The organ trio, it is... But like I said, I'm not really doing that. It's like uh, maybe stepping on some traditional toes to uh, to do it. But but I like playing the funk stuff. I work with guys who like playing the funk stuff. And and if it's not traditional, then there there it is. People seem to like it. And, uh, people seem to like the album, which is good. And, and uh, I'm okay with that. I'm just like, That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report reporting live here at the Iridium here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Pete Levin for his time as well as the staff and management here at the Iridium. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. <laughs>